Have you ever felt that you wanted more time to do proper design research, but couldn't get your client to see it too? Well, you're not alone. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can explain design research and its value in a way that clients understand by focusing on just one key aspect of design research. That's what's coming up. Let the show begin. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to do work that makes you proud by designing and delivering services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business. And a key element to design these services is of course design research. And I see a lot of people struggling to explain design research to clients in a way that clients actually understand the value of design research. In order to explain design research, we have to understand that the word research has a completely different annotation for most people compared to how designers look at the word research. Most people, including our clients, consider research as a way to get answers and we know that the nature of design research is not so much to give answers but rather to find the right question that we need to be solving now when you fail to explain design research and don't get the time to actually do it you'll end up as we know with subpar solutions that eventually will lead to disappointment with our clients. And that eventually means that the next time we're going to ask for budget to do design research, the chances are even slimmer that we'll get it. So you come up, you come in into a pretty negative spiral, which we really have to break out of. One of the ways I explain design research is by using a story from one of our projects we did at 31 Volts. And that is where we worked on uh, finding ways to attract more tourists to the local musea here in the hometown of Utrecht. The notion was that the solution to getting more people through the museum doors would lie inside the museum. So a better collection, uh, a better, better coffee machine. And we challenged that notion and said, let's do some design research and let's figure out if that's really the issue why not all of the people, not all of the tourists who could go to the museum, go to the museum. So what we did is uh, we went outside, we followed tourists through the city as they went to and left the museum to see what they were doing. We made a photo study out of that. And alongside we interviewed people uh, museum visitors to see what their motivation was to go to the museum. And what we found in um, this design research is that a museum visit for most people is just part of a bigger um, day out. It's like they're having uh, a nice day where they just tend to visit to a museum. So we found that, for instance, in the city of Utrecht, there are three major landmarks where most of the tourists come together because uh, it's the place where you can make a really scenic photo, like the Kodak moment. And the one of the ideas for that was if you want to get more tourists in your museum, you as a museum should be at these landmarks. So instead of improving your coffee or your collection, or maybe next to improving your coffee and collection, there were also some really interesting opportunities outside of the doors of Musea. But the only re way we found this is by exploring uh, the opportunities in this early stages of this project. If we wouldn't have gone out, if we wouldn't have followed these tourists, if we wouldn't have talked to them, we probably never would have realized that it might be as simple as just putting up a sign at three places in the city. So this is a really good way for me to sort of show the nature of design research and where it might lead to. So when I explain design research and its value to my clients, 
I usually talk about that design research is about exploration. That's the very nature of design research. It's about finding opportunities. It's like finding or creating your Lego bricks before you actually start creating your Lego castle. The more bricks you have, the more diverse they are, uh, the more uh, interesting your solution might be, the, the more sort of opportunity directions you'll find. So design research is not about validation. It's not about coming to conclusions. Design research is really about expanding the choices that you have as a designer. So why do we actually do design research? I already hinted upon this, but for me, it's about two things. One is figuring out if the challenge we're working on is actually a problem worth solving, or is there something else that is more interesting and more valuable to solve? That's one key uh, reason why we do design research. The other one is like I just mentioned, to create opportunities, to expand the choices we have. Like again, with the Lego bricks, if we have to work with a small and limited set of Lego bricks, the solutions that we'll come up with, the castles that we'll build will probably be pretty boring. So the more Lego bricks we have in the beginning, the more interesting our solutions will be. So to summarize this in one sentence, design research is about exploration, not validation. It's about creating choices. It's about finding clues. It's not about finding the best answer or coming to conclusions. And now the big question, why should your client care about doing design research, investing in design research? Well, for one, are they interested in finding out if the challenge they're working on is actually the right challenge? Is it the challenge worth solving? Or do they want to run the risk that they will be finding solutions for a problem that really isn't the problem or isn't the root cause or is the big problem? So do they want to run the risk or do they want to sort of buy an insurance through design research? And the other thing is, the more choices you have, the more clues you have at the beginning, the more informed your eventual solution will be. So again, more Lego bricks leads to more interesting solutions with design research, more opportunities, more insights, more clues in the beginning lead to better and more informed decisions, better and more informed solutions. I'd really like to know, was this a helpful video? Should I be making more videos like this? And if so, which topic should I cover? Leave a comment down below and let's see what pops up. This was about de explaining design research. I also have a free training for you about explaining service design. Check out the link to that course that's over here. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when new videos like this come out. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.